The Quest 2 has come to dominate the VR market, so we should probably optimize for it. Luckily, Meta provides a list of settings that works best for the Quest 2, and I'm gonna go over that right now. The first thing we wanna do is make sure that we can actually target the Quest 2, and since it runs on Android, we have to have the Android modules installed. So if we come over to installs, you wanna go to the version that you're actually gonna be using for your project, hit this cog, add module, and then you'll see this is actually already installed for me. You just check these and hit install, and you'll be ready to to go and optimize for the Quest 2. And the project that I'm using for this is the same free VR template that I've been using. I've just added a few things to the scene. The first thing that we want to fix is our actual build settings. So if you go to file, build settings, we can now switch to the Android platform since we've installed that module. And if you click this, it might take a minute, but it'll switch over and we can then build for Android. Cool, and so we've switched over to the Android platform, but one last thing I wanna do is change this texture compression to ASTC. And what it stands for is Adaptive Scalar Texture Compression. And apparently it's just a newer form of compression and it covers a wider range of textures that it can compress. So overall it should reduce our game file size. So there you go, first optimization done. Next, we're gonna wanna play with the rendering settings. So if we come over here, go to Edit, project settings and then we need to go to player we will be able to play with the rendering settings and you'll find it under other and rendering so the first setting i'm going to mess with is color space i'm going to switch it to linear and so what linear lighting does is it kind of evens out how light interacts with objects and i'll pop up a little image here so you can kind of see the difference between gamma space and linear space and you'll notice it looks a little more realistic with linear space now the next thing i want to mess with here is if you have multiple here, I'm just going to leave this with OpenGLES3. And you can have Vulkan. It says on meta that they do support Vulkan, but you know what? It says it's still in the experimental phase. And so I'm just going to go ahead and leave this here. I'm going to get rid of Vulkan again. And we're just going to leave it as is. And oh, sorry, I somehow changed that. My bad. But yes, also OpenGLES3 is required for linear color spaces. So yeah, and then we want to make sure we have multi-threaded rendering in enabled, and that's just going to allow us to use CPUs with multiple cores. Unity will take the graphics API calls and separate that into its own thread and just kind of speed up the rendering process a bit there. You want to have static batching and dynamic batching there, and I did cover this in my draw calls video, so yeah, this reduces draw calls, which again, lightens the load. And if we come down a little here, you'll see texture compression format again. And yeah, I'm gonna switch it to ASTC here as well. And you're gonna say, well, didn't you, we do this in build settings. And yeah, we did, but I'm gonna do it again. Why? Because cover your bases wherever you can, just be redundant. Last, we want to come down to the identification area and we are gonna switch this from saying Android 6.0 to Android 10 and make sure that this is automatic. I just install and yeah, that's just because Meta requires it. Not really an improvement in terms of performance, a requirement by Meta. And that's it for rendering settings. Let's talk about configuration settings. And kicking things off is going to be the scripted back end. So we're going to scroll down here to configuration. And the scripted back end we are going to choose is this IL2CPP. And pretty much what that does is it helps convert the C sharp code into C code. And then that goes into machine code. A According to Unity, it will provide better support for a wider range of platforms and also some improvements in performance. So yeah, let's go with that. Now that we've chosen the scripting backend, this is actually going to give us access to ARM64 for target architecture. And we're going to go ahead and mark ARM7 off. And the reason we're choosing ARM64 is because Meta or the Meta Store only allows 64-bit applications on their storefront. And that is how we can target it being a 64-bit application. Finally, we're going to set the install location to automatic, and this just allows the operating system that the application is trying to be installed on to choose where to install it. And all the settings there are good. Let's move on to how our Oculus or how we want the Quest to render things. So if we go over to XR plugin management and specifically under Oculus, we want to have the Android tab here, and we are going to be playing with stereo rendering mode. Normally in VR, we have to render two different eyeballs right and they are both seeing slightly different things and that costs a lot of processing power but we have a different way instead of just doing multi-pass rendering we can do something called single pass stereo rendering and what that does is instead of rendering two different things entirely for each eye we instead 
render and bounce between both eyeballs at the same time when we're rendering one object. So it kind of shares data and processes it for each eyeball at the same time and draws it instead of do one whole eye and then do the whole other eye. And here you just change it to multi-view and yeah, now you have single pass stereo rendering going on. If you wanna read more about it, I will make sure to link an article in the description below. All right, let's move on to the quality settings. And so if I come over here, I'm gonna hit add quality level and I am gonna select it and I'm gonna rename it Quest 2. And this is gonna serve as our settings for the Quest 2. Now, the first suggestion that Meta gives is changing pixel light count to one. And what pixel light count does is it essentially is telling Unity, hey, this is how important lights are going to be. So let me shrink this down a little bit and show you what I mean. So if we give it a four, that is the max it can do. You'll see the lights are all there and it's considering every single one very important and make sure that it renders it. But as we reduce it down to three, still has them all down to two, you'll see it reduced down to one of them and then down to one, it's only doing the light here. So it's just a way of across the board changing how we want to render our lights because lights are really, really heavy on performance and Meta suggests only having a pixel light count of one. Next, we are going to be making sure that we have an anti-aliasing of four. And you'll see we have a bunch of different options here. And so what anti-aliasing does is it smooths out the edges of objects. You'll notice here that they can get a little rough around the edges, but if we improve, it, you'll see that it got a little better. And so we have to strike a balance between having it super smooth and a little rough, and Meta suggests that a four times is just about right. Then Meta also suggests that you have a real-time reflection probe set to on, and then texture quality, we wanna make sure we're doing full res because we want things to look pretty good in our games. For anisotropic textures, that's a hard one, we want to have it per texture. And what anisotropic textures is, is when you view an object at an angle, it kind of determines how smoothed out it's going to be. And if you do forced on, it is going to force it to have the highest quality no matter what, no matter what texture it is and what the preferences of that texture. This one will just let you do it on a texture by texture basis. And so that saves you a little bit of processing slash GPU work. And the last settings here they suggest is we make sure we don't have soft particles on. That just kind of rounds out the edges of particles. And last but not least, they say that we need to have billboards face camera position set to true. So when we render billboards and such, it faces the camera. The only suggestions I would make is play around with your shadow settings. You know, you could consider disabling them, only doing hard shadows. I would say hard and soft shadows is pretty expensive. And so might want to just stick with hard shadows. And in a future video, I'm going to cover how to bake shadows into our scenes and make things look great without hurting our performance too much. So there it is. There might be a few settings you want to experiment with and see what works best for the Quest 2 and you, but that is it for this Shrimpo. And speaking of the Shrimpo, if you want to help me out, give me a like and I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye.